Thank you for cruising by for my daily devotions. November the 12th, it's Sunday, 2023. And after I do this, I'm heading to church and to Bible class. Hope you'll do the same. Um, we're going to look at Revelation chapter 20 and um, Matthew chapter 27, Psalm 131 and Leviticus chapter 9. We were reading the 19th chapter of uh, Revelation yesterday, uh, starting at verse 19 says this, Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against the ruler, uh, against the rider on the horse and his army. They're going to make war with God and his people, with the Christ and his people. But the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the lake of burning sulfur. The rest of them were killed with the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider of the horse, who is Christ, and all the birds gorged themselves on the flesh. The point is that the devil and all of his followers, all his dudes and dudettes are going to get smashed. They're going to get defeated. They'll get bound and thrown into the lake of burning sulfur forever and ever and ever. Judgment is coming to the devil and his guys. Hang on to that. I hope you will uh, just understand that he loses and you win, Christian, you win. Let's pray and jump into the word for today. Father, speak to us today with authority, with power, with grace. Write your word on our hearts. Change us from the inside out by the power of the Holy Spirit as you write a new law on our heart uh, that's, that's bathed in the blood of Jesus and help us live under that power and that influence, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 20th chapter of um, Revelation. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. I saw thrones on which uh, were seated those who had given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of the testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection because bless, uh, resurrection, blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. The second death has not has no power over them. But they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and he will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sand of the seashore. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But they, fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from, from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. In Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. All I have to do is land on it here. Okay. Early in the morning... All the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. That was pretty much predetermined, don't you think? I do. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. 
when Judas, who, was, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I've sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is, what is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. And then he went away and hanged himself. Chief priests picked up the coins and said, it's against the law to put this into the treasury since it's blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why it is called the field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the 30 silver coins, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even a single charge to the, not even to a single charge to the great amazement of the governor. I'm going to have a drink of coffee. How about you? I hope you're enjoying your morning and get ready for a great Lord's Day. Now it was the governor's custom at that feast to release a, a, release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message, don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Jesus saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead of an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged, handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium, gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him, put a scarlet robe on him, and then twisted it together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit at him, spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. And after they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him. <clears throat> Above his head, they placed a written charge against him. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Two robbers were cru crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you're the son of God. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. We will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him heaped insults on him. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge and filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. 
And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to, to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Joseph, the mother of Zebedee's sons. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it, listen to this, in his own new tomb that he had cut out of rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. When Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. And this last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. And so they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. Didn't work. Didn't work. Psalm 131. Psalm 131. Love the Psalms, love the Psalms. I'm sure you do too. Psalm 131 is really short, okay? Three verses. My heart is not proud, O Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me, but I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. Leviticus chapter 9. Leviticus chapter 9. On the eighth day, Moses summoned Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. He said to Aaron, take a bull a bull calf for your sin offering and a ram for your burnt offering, both without defect, and present them before the Lord. Then say to the Israelites, take a male goat for a sin offering and a calf and a lamb, both a year old and without defect for a burnt offering and an ox and a ram for a fellowship offering to sacrifice bef before the Lord together with a grain offering mixed with oil for today, the Lord will appear to you. They took the things Moses commanded to the front of the tent of meeting and the es entire assembly came near and stood before the Lord. And then Moses said, this is what the Lord has commanded you to do so that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Moses said to Aaron, come to the altar and sacrifice your sin offering and your burnt offering and make atonement for yourself and your people and the people. Sacrifice the offering that is for the people and make atonement for them as the Lord has commanded. So Aaron came to the altar and slaughtered the calf as a sin offering for himself. His sons brought the, the blood to him and he dipped his finger into the blood and put it on the horns of the altar. The rest of the blood he poured out at the base of the altar. On the altar, he burned the fat, the kidneys, and the covering of the liver from the sin offering as the Lord commanded Moses. The flesh and the hide he burned outside the camp. Then he slaughtered the burnt offering. His sons handed him the blood the spring, and sprinkled it on the altar on all sides. They handed him the burnt offering piece by piece, including the head, and he burned them on the altar. He washed the inner parts of the legs and burned them on top of the burnt offering on the altar. Aaron then brought the offerings that were, that was the offering that was for the people. He took the goat for the people, for the people's sin offering and slaughtered it and offered it for a sin offering as he did with the first one. He brought the burnt offering and offered it in the prescribed way. 
He also brought the grain offering, took a handful of it, and burned it on the altar in addition to the morning, the morning's burnt offerings. He slaughtered the ox and the ram as fellowship offering for the people. His sons handed him the blood, and he sprinkled it against the altar on all sides. But the fat portion of the ox and the ram, the fat tail, the layer of fat, the kidneys, the covering of the liver, these they laid on the, on the breasts, and then Aaron turned the fat on the altar, burned the fat on the altar. Uh, Aaron waved the, the breasts and the right thigh before the Lord as a wave offering as Moses commanded. Then Aaron lifted his hands toward the people and blessed them. And having sacrificed the sin offering, the burnt offering, the fellowship offering, he stepped down. Moses and Aaron then went into the tent of meeting. When they came out, they blessed the people and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Fire came out of the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat portions on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted with for joy and fell face down. God moved. Well, bless you. Have a great day. Let's pray again. Father, I lift all this up to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for speaking to us, Father. Change our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit according to the truth of your word. Make us different because we heard from you today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.